Terra Fate Bar on launch date announced, Ion and Blade and Soul get the mobile treatment, all that and more. I'm Zach Sharps and this is Free to Play Weekly. To celebrate Eve's third birthday, the Elsor team has something quite awesome in store. Recently unveiled, the newest raid boss, Durbaki, the Warden of Darkness, looks to be taking Elsor's endgame to a whole new level. Want to take on the Warden of Darkness? Make sure to bring 12 other players with you, but there is a catch. You only have 12 minutes to defeat him. Eve's birthday event starts November 23rd. Just five months after the PC version went free to play, the Xbox 360 version of Defiance finally gets added to the Xbox Live free to play menus. However, you still have to be an Xbox Live Gold member, which is $60 per year, but returning players will have access to all content through the end of Season 2, and they will also get a good amount of perks as a return present, including four available character slots, five available loadouts, art key code limit of 75, 70 total inventory slots, 30 day paradise patron pass, and a grant of a thousand arc forge. Not sure how many of you guys have an Xbox 360 out there though, but if you do and are a fan of Defiance, do these perks interest you enough to hop back in the game now that it is free to play? Leave a comment down below if you will be checking it out. This week, Snail Games announced that the first expansion for the free-to-play MMORPG Black Gold will go live on November the 24th. The expansion titled Bloody Tides will be free DLC for all players to jump into, and featuring in this very large expansion is a level cap raised to 50, adding two new dungeons, two new races, a new class called the Brawler which is capable of both melee and ranged combat, utilizing a combination of fist weapons and a magical staff, three new zones, a 3v3 arena mode, and more. Overall, this expansion expansion is quite large, and if you want to learn more about the additional tweaks, balancing, and more, Black Gold's official expansion page will fill you right in. Fans of Terra will be happy to know that Fate of Arn finally has a launch date, and Mass Entertainment announced that the release date for the much-anticipated expansion is December the 16th. The expansion features a level cap raise of 65, all new class skills, a new continent with new zones and dungeons, a new type of battleground that features competitive PvE elements, as well as general gameplay and crafting improvements. If you felt the quest grind in Terra was a little bit too steep, you'll be very happy to know that it has been improved along with other quality of life improvements. Players will enjoy simplified enchanting, the ability to fuse unused crystals into powerful ones, and a new quest UI that streamlines level 60 to 65 leveling, allowing players to teleport right into the action, find groups, or turn in quests from any location. For players logging in prior to the launch of Fate of Arn, you'll receive a special Northern Initiative pack that contains numerous rare potions, campfires, and even a new mount named Fates that restores HP. If you were interested in Terra, it seems like this is the correct time for you to hop back in, prepare for the expansion, and get free goodies as well. If you were waiting for part 2 of DC Universe Online's War of the Light content, then you'll be happy to know that the wait is now over. Part 2 is now live on all platforms, and features Carol Ferris and the Star Sapphires coming to Earth, a slew of content for PvE players looking for solo or to roll in groups up to 8, but because of the recent addition of Green Arrow, PvP players will have to wait a little bit longer for more updates. The DLC is free for members, non-members will have to pay $9.99, and for further details of balancing and additional improvements, check out the full official post on DCUniverseOnline.com. Those of you looking forward to playing Planetside 2 on your PS4 has got fantastic news this week. According to an interview with Eurogamer, creative director Matt Higby estimated that the beta would be ready to go by the end of 2014. Regarding how long it's taken to release the beta, Higby stated, As much as it sounds like we're blowing smoke, we're working really hard to release a game that feels like a full-on console experience and not just like a port. Higby continued, So it's taken us quite a long time to rejigger our user interface and our controls, there's a lot that needs to get done. Planet Side 2 on the PS4 will be free to play just like its PC cousin, however, each will be played on separate instances because SOE doesn't think cross-platform functionality makes sense. Will you be playing Planet Side 2 on the PS4? Leave a comment down below. With details still making their way out of G-Star, NCSoft has announced that both Ion and Blade and Soul will be receiving mobile treatment soon. Ion's Legion will be a tactical RPG that challenges players to defeat some well-known bosses from the world of Ion, and Blade and Soul's mobile version seems to be more along the lines of a card game. With these announcements, I want to drop the question of the week. In last week's show, we asked whether or not you think Wildstar will be going free-to-play late 2015. A user by the name of Locke Felino replied, 
implied, I imagine NCSoft keeping Wildstar's pay to play until at least the middle of 2015. Despite it not doing well financially, there is still a decent amount of potential there. All they need to do is tinker with things a bit and find the right formula. In short, I do see it going free to play, just not instantaneously. Thanks for your answer, Locke, and if you want your comment possibly featured in next week's episode, make sure to leave your comment down below. This week's question is, with an increasing number of companion apps coming out for MMOs, do you see this as a good trend or a bad one? Make sure to leave your thoughts down below. Some new information about Lineage Eternal, NCSoft's newest MMORPG was released this week, and because there's a ton of information here in terms of features and the additional gameplay, NCSoft has me quite interested in this iteration of Lineage that will be released globally. The features translated were open world gameplay with up to 500 players in one area, unique skill activation systems, field event quests, world raid bosses with 20 plus members, randomized dungeons, dynamic dungeons, player killing available, PvP arenas, a simplified control scheme, items and experience obtainable through solo event quests, town hubs for players to hang out in, mobile game support using Cloud Connect features, generic questing systems removed, and a new Assassin's class. I don't know about you guys, but that sounds like a ton of features, and two particularly caught my interest. I'm very curious to see how the dungeons play out because of their randomness and dynamic feature set. Plus, it'll be interesting to see how really open world Lineage Eternal will actually be. However, one thing is clear as day. Lineage Eternal will be releasing globally simultaneously, so unlike with Blade and Soul, we will not have to wait a really long time to get our hands on it. Snail Games is now involved with a brand new lawsuit for harassment and discrimination. David Runyon, the de facto head of Snail Games USA for six months in 2013, is suing his former company and boss over what he deems as wrongful termination. According to Runyon, working for Snail Games founder and CEO was extraordinarily difficult as he was a volatile individual who would often make decisions based on raw emotion and snap judgments. February 2013, Runyon was granted full control of the American branch of the company, seeing it through the launch of Age of Wushu, then after hurting his back during a company move, was terminated while recuperating, a time in which he claims to have provided ample medical evidence of his injury. Massively is also reporting that Snail Games is also the subject of another lawsuit on top of the discrimination allegations, this time in the realm of copyright claim from Blizzard over the use of certain panda images. Definitely not a good time to be working for Snail Games, I mean, unless you like lawsuits, then I think I'll pass though. That is all the top news stories of the week, guys. Make sure you leave your comments down below for the question of the week. I'm Zach Sharp signing off till next week's episode of Free to Play Weekly. I'll catch you guys next time.